Hi friends, how are you? It's Ashwin, how are you? I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about this absolutely stunning pair of sweeping double monks paid by this company right here. This is the logo upside down, albeit, of October 10th. October 10th is the hand welted line of Sons of Henry, whom I've featured in another video that you can take a look at. These are shoes that are actually made in China. Um, and for those of you who you are not aware, a number of overseas manufacturers in places like China, Indonesia, and other locations have become increasingly relevant in the classic menswear industry. So let's talk specifically about this shoe, and then I'll talk a little bit about October 10th. This is a gorgeous sweeping monk design. So for those of you who are not aware of sweeping monks, these are a double monk design. Here you go. Here's a double monk, double strap right there with this um, piece of leather across the top. And this piece of leather actually continues all the way around. You can see the seamless back there. So here's that single piece of leather with the two leather extensions sweeping all the way around. And you can see it's all one piece of leather. One giant piece of leather making this beautiful shoe. This was uh, an idea that I had to make this shoe in a dark brown Horween hatch grain leather using a 180 degree Norwegian welt, a silhouette sole with a beveled waist and metal toe taps with a slight rubber heel cap to help with traction um, to make this shoe. This is done on their Poo Last, P-U, not P-O-O, -O, but P-U Last. The Poo Last is a really cool rounded last um, that is slightly asymmetrical. It has this sort of banana shape to it um, that they, it comes with a little bit of toe burnishing. I added some shine using Pure Polish products, my favorite products, to give this shoe a little bit more luster. And I wanted to hold up so you could see the character and design here of this incredible welt. So this is really rather impressive. Yeah, let's see if I can get that in a little closer. There we go. And this Norwegian welt is done very, very elegantly. You can see that the weaves almost interlace each other um, and form this kind of wave pattern. And then there's another lace, similar colored, that then essentially attaches the upper to the sole here. The stitch density is pretty darn good here. Uh, in terms of a welted shoe. Um, and I would say one of the more elegant Norwegian welts that I own um, in terms of overall fit and finish. I thought that the choice of a plain toe worked really well to be able to feature the welt and the sweeping monk design. And I've already added the hatch grain as an additional element to bring some style to this beautiful shoe. The poo last you can see has this kind of steep fall off here, which is characteristic of some of October 10th's designs here. This comes with lasted shoe trees, which I can certainly pop out, but I'm gonna fail in doing that. So I'm not gonna do that at the moment. Um, and just a beautiful makeup all around. A um, Couple few details just to note, notice here is that the welt stitching continues through the waist. You can see that in other October 10th shoes, I was a little surprised to see this welt stitching because it's often blind stitched in some of the non-Norwegian stitch uh, shoes, which I'm gonna show you in a second. So that was something that I thought was a little bit lacking. This has a beautiful pitched, uh, sorry, a block heel. The block heel has a very uh, slight taper 
you might be able to appreciate that. But overall is a block heel um, done very well um, with a slight curve on the bottom to kind of add to the flow of the shoe. Um, I could have gotten a pitched heel, but I think that this works quite well for this style as well. So um, double monk, sweeping double monk, one piece of leather, two pieces of leather if you include both shoes, funny me. Um, beautiful anane hatch green, dark brown or espresso, I believe, colored leather with a little bit of toe burnishing, 180 degree Norwegian welt and block heels, just ready to kick some butt. I wanted to show these shoes off before I put them on and start walking in them in a elegant and yet understated slash overstated way, depending on who is looking at my shoes and who cares, but these are beautiful shoes. So take a look at those. I wanted to leave you with one other pair that I have from October 10th because I have ooh, two pairs of shoes. Um, and this is their Spiral Oxford. So the Spiral Oxford is essentially a shoe that I've had for about six months. Um, it's a beautiful shoe. You can see just a slight bit of creasing on the vamp there. This is a shoe that from one side looks like a Balmoral Adelaide design. You can see the sweeping Balmoral design. It's got that austerity brogue wing tip, and it looks like an Adelaide from the side, right? Pretty cool, huh? But if I flip it, whoa, look at that. It ends here, and then it just keeps going here, almost like the Balmoral on the other side. And there are designs that are made by companies. Originally, it was John Lobb, I believe is their chapel model, if I'm not mistaken, um, that was designed with a seamless heel. This is actually two pieces of leather. It's not one piece of leather, but two pieces of leather. You can see the seam in the back. Um, makes the design a little bit easier to execute for obvious reasons. But for all other intents and purposes, this is a good way to get the look of a spiral hole cup without necessarily John Lobb prices. Now there are others, including Yeosol and Win uh, Winston, as well as um, Gordon Jimjun, who are doing spiral hole cuts at a very affordable price point these days, around $500. So comparable in price to the Spiral Oxford. So there are other options out there, but I wanted to give you an idea of what a Spiral Oxford looks like. This was made with a upper, this is the Anna burgundy hatch grain leather. I was into hatch grains, still am, um, but you can make um, some debate about whether this should be done in a calf for a smoother leather choice to really bring attention to the cut. The hatch grain may take away from that a little bit or be a bit distracting to some. I find it to be nice because I use this in a semi-formal fashion. Um, fiddle back waist, a little bit of a silhouette design to the heel um, and a similar block with toe plates in this case. So anyways, just wanted to stop there and let you know that I really think highly of uh, October 10th as another option for you to consider at the um, 500 to 750 to $800 range, depending on if you're looking in that space, uh, similar to Antonio Macariello and others, Yeosol, uh, Vass, Enzo Bonafe are some of the companies in that price point that you can consider at really high quality hand welted shoes, but these being made in China, really doing a fantastic job of creating a, a unique design ethos. Consider uh, October 10th.